So I'm a chemical engineer in training, working at a startup right now. I use first principles thinking on a daily basis to get my job done. And it's one of the most crucial parts of being an engineer, I think. It's to be able to reason through logic, through fundamental principles to actually create solutions that make sense and that actually work for the specific type of problem that you're solving. Uh, 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 when I started in university, I thought I had a great way of studying. Basically, my studying approach was that I would skip reading all those lecture notes and lecture slides. I would jump in straight to the problems and try and figure out what are those five to 10 types of questions that are gonna be on the exam. And from that, I would just practice questions over and over again. And anytime that I got stuck, anytime that I didn't know exactly how to do the question, immediately I would go to the solutions and try to reason my way backwards to figure out what the methods were to solving the, these types of problems. And it worked for me. I got pretty good grades off this method of studying where I, I didn't have to go to lecture at all and I could study just from doing practice problems. I thought I had it all figured out. What I didn't realize is that I was losing a critical skill of engineering, which is called critical thinking. <laughs> Basically by solving problems from this way of trying to understand what the methods are of getting to a solution, rather than reasoning my way up from the theory, which is time consuming and slow. I was basically getting by on rote memorization, which means that you learn not by understanding fundamental concepts and linking those fundamental concepts, but you actually learn from just memorizing things and remembering as best as you can what you've seen before. Most exams in my university were split up into sections where you could basically plug and chug solutions. These are questions that are pretty similar to um, the homework where you know, you're doing the same type of thinking to get the solution. And it's really nothing new here. You're just acting based on what you've seen before. And then when it came to certain exams and courses where there was a lot of abstract thinking or connecting concepts in new, unique ways that I had not seen before, I found that that really stumped me and was a huge challenge for me because I hadn't built my foundation of knowledge from first principles. You know, I loved seeing examples. How did my prof do it? How did the other smart students in my class do it? I thought that the best way to learn was by learning from how other people thought. But at the same time, I was losing my own way of thinking uniquely and from first principles. I got so caught up in trying to maximize my grades that I forgot about the essential part of university, which is not about learning a bunch of things and having a bunch of facts and figures in your head, but more about being able to take unique things that you've never seen before and to make useful solutions out of those things. University isn't so much about learning a bunch of concepts, but more about how you learn concepts and apply those concepts to unique problems. So there's this really great quote from Richard Feynman, which was a physics Nobel Prize winner for something that I really don't understand and I'm not gonna even try to under the quote goes, I don't know what's the matter with people. They don't learn by understanding. They learn by some other way, by rote or something, which means like from past examples, their knowledge is so fragile. And this was basically me back in uh, my second year of university where I was just going through the motions of doing lots of questions and not really thinking for myself of how to answer questions uniquely and on my own. When most people like myself are faced with a complex problem, the first thing we'll usually think to ourselves is have I seen something like this before? And this is called reasoning by analogy or from past experience. Oh. There's nothing wrong with reasoning by analogy. It's a lot quicker and it'll save you a lot of time on an exam when you're in a stressful situation and you want to just get the best solution as quickly as possible. You don't want to be sitting there thinking through complex problems for the first time, right? Like you want to be able to see a problem, know how to solve it right away, which is kind of a fault of our universities, which is that these exams, which are just loaded with a bunch of questions, kind of force you to learn by rote memorization or by learning how to do a bunch of different examples. But in my opinion, that doesn't really help you for the long run. And especially in the workplace, as I'm seeing right now, usually in the workplace, you're not overloaded with a bunch of little problems 
and you know you have to pull out your formula book and you've got to solve all these different problems at the same time for me in a day i'll maybe answer only two or three big questions and while i'm not solving tons of different questions every day each of those questions is more of a bigger picture idea and i'm answering those questions not based on what has been done before most of the time i'm figuring out a solution to these things from first principles so i have to figure out what's fundamentally true about the world about chemistry and physics and then I have to formulate a solution based on those principles. So this was especially hard for me when I started working at this startup. I'd be given questions super open-endedly and I'd have to interpret them as best as I could to come up with a solution. I had to think creatively, I had to think outside of the box and I think because of the way that I learned uh, to do well in school, um, I think that a lot of my thinking was plagued with reasoning by analogy. And obviously the problem with work is that if there was a solution book that everybody would go to, they wouldn't need you there, right? So your job as an engineer, as a critical thinker in whatever profession you're in is to come up with new ideas, new solutions, because there is no solution book in real life. As another super smart, renowned American efficiency engineer, Harrington Emerson put it, as to methods, there may be a million and then some, but principles are few. The man who grasps principles can successfully select his own methods. The man who tries methods, aka younger, stupider me, ignoring principles is sure to have trouble, which I did. A first principle is basically a fundamental truth of the universe. Think of gravity, think of Newton's laws of motion. These are things that are definitely true and not up to interpretation. So how I've personally adopted a habit of thinking from first principles is that whenever I'm given a new idea or thought or piece of knowledge, I always look to challenge it from multiple angles and perspectives. For example, think of basically anything that anyone's ever told you and try to think to yourself, is this really true? And you know, are there scenarios where this is not true? Basically, it's about having a rigid screening process before accepting anything into your head. In this way, you can not only accept new knowledge, but what you're trying to do here is to connect various pieces of knowledge uh, in your knowledge trees. I think Elon Musk put it in a really good way for me, and he describes it as the way that he thinks of new ideas for his companies and how he reasons through what might be important for the world and if those things might even be possible. Elon Musk describes first principles thinking as thinking of knowledge as a tree. And what we want to get through first are those fundamental principles, which is kind of like the base or the trunk of the tree. From that, we build outwards towards the finer details, um, the facts, the figures, the whatevers of our subject. He says that it's important to understand the fundamental principles first, which is the trunk of the tree, and then go towards the leaves and the branches. Otherwise, there won't be anything for them to hold on to. One big example of how he did this was with Tesla. So 20 years ago when he created Tesla, electric cars were a thing that people said was too expensive. And while now it seems like it was, you know, impossible for Tesla not to exceed, it was quite the opposite back then where most people thought Tesla was just another electric car company coming to steal their money. So back in 2003, when Tesla was formed, he asked himself why electric car batteries are so expensive. They were $600 per kilowatt hour. And he asked himself why, why does it have to be that way? Somebody could say, um, in fact, people do, uh, that factory packs are really expensive and that's just the way they'll always be because that's the way they've been in the past. Um, you're like, well, no, that's, that's pretty dumb. So he asked the question, why are these things so expensive? He broke them down to their core materials and added up what the sum of the parts were. And he came to a number that was much lower than $600 per kilowatt hour. It was only about $80. What he did was he didn't settle for the answer that everybody told him was true. He tried to look for ways where he could bring the cost down incrementally. His solution to make batteries cheaper was to find materials that could be sourced more cheaply. He looked for better ways to produce the batteries at scale. And he also automated repetitive tasks in his plant, including 
using robots for most of the repetitive tasks. So now Tesla has a battery pack that's about $116 per kilowatt hour compared to most of the industry, which is at $140 per kilowatt hour. And it all started with first principles thinking. How do you take the human race to Mars? How do you feed a population of 10 billion people? These are not simple questions that we can just go to the back of a textbook to figure out the answer to. We need to understand these problems fundamentally and then only then can we take fundamental truths and build them together to build a solution that actually works. Once again, we have to change not what we think, but how we think. Scientific breakthrough. Number one, first principles solutions are based on logic and reasoning. And while one method may have worked for another person, there may have been tons of other factors that played into the result that those people got. So working through problems on a first principles approach is crucial because no two problems are exactly the same. Number two, it's a great way to figure out where the weak points of your argument are. So when you continually ask yourself why a certain piece of information is true, you can get to the core of whether it's actually true or whether someone just told you it was true and you accepted it. And number three, first principles thinking, the more you do it, the more you're able to not only draw from knowledge and apply it to one situation, but just like how Elon Musk is able to create an electric car company, send a rocket to space and build tunnels in the ground, He's operating from first principles thinking, which is able to connect many of these concepts together and apply those core principles of how to run a company, of how to make a technology that works and that people will use. And overall, if you're able to use first thinking properly, you can not only apply this to your work, but to daily life decisions to important philosophical questions. Working at a startup, I often do have to conceptualize through situations and scenarios that don't currently, currently exist and have never existed yet. And so being able to operate from a first principles thinking method, I think is crucial for an engineer because we do not want to simply take what was done before and repeat that over and over and make tiny little improvements. What we want to do is create radically new solutions to solve the world in better ways than it's been done before. The smartest guy that I know graduated at the top of our university, not just at the top of our graduating class, at the top of our university, he always operated from first principles thinking methods. Our professor would have this, you know, guide for how to do these types of questions. And my friend, he would always do them differently. And he would always have a different way of thinking. And what we found that was that he was usually never wrong and the professors in our class knew that too. So yeah, when you operate from first principles, you're able to get the right answer, not based on what other people have done, but through your own logic and reasoning. So if you guys like this video, please make sure to check out the resources uh, that I used to create this video. I read The Great Mental Models Volume 1, which was super helpful in helping me kind of understand what first principles thinking actually is and why it's so beneficial. Uh, the book also comes with a ton of other useful mental models for uh, thinking better, thinking clearer, and ultimately being able to solve problems better. Thanks for watching the video. Please drop a like, comment if you like the video at all and want to see more content like this. If you want to see more chemical engineering, productivity, information, videos like this, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button so that YouTube puts my face in front of your YouTube homepage more often. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.